What's going on everybody? Gunner here. Today I want to show you guys how to make your own pike size dubbing brushes. Um, so these brushes are based off of Enrico Puglesi's uh, kind of style EP craft fur brushes. So you have this kind of dense inner core and then you have a longer uh, supple winging material, right? So our core for this fly is going to be some EP Game Changer fibers. Now this is a blended fiber. The EP Game Changer blends have a little bit of flash glue in them. They're multicolored um, and they're pretty cool. So this is colored root beer by the way. And that's going to be our dense core, right? And then for our supple winging material we're going to be using Big Fly fiber. And then we're going to be adding some ice wing fiber in gold for some subtle flash. So what I have here, my setup, is the Stanfo dubbing brush device and Stanfo turbo spinner, which is what we're going to be using to spin this up. And you need some dubbing brush wire and some dubbing brush wax. The wax is helpful, you don't need it, but it's helpful. The wire is size large and .009, it's just stainless steel wire. Um, and I'd recommend putting it on a bobbin because if you don't it'll come off and make a mess. So basically I'm going to wrap this around this hook two times, hold them together and spin that up. And that's going to lock my wire in place and you are good to go. We'll run that over and this hook over here, if you can see this, is on a spring. right? So as we spin this up it's going to add a lot of tension. You're going to see that spring compress and the way I've been doing it is when the spring's halfway, I'll brush it out for the first time and then I'll spin it up all the way until that is all the way compressed and that is when you are good to go and your materials aren't going to fall out and you'll have a nice durable brush. So I'm going to pick up my table here, get my wire right in the center groove of this and lock that in place. So I have done a pike size and a musky size brush so far. I'm going to show you guys the pike size. And the inner core, the length that you want to cut your inner core to is just, well it's pretty close, you can do two and a half inches is going to be your core. And then we're actually going to have seven inches of big fly fiber. So that is the recipe that I have really enjoyed. I think it gives you the kind of the best silhouette and taper. So I just pull my fibers out in this big bundle here. I'm going to take out uh, a rather good chunk of that and something that is my personal preference is I'd rather have a sparse brush because the sparse, sparser the brush kind of the easier it is to work with and manipulate and tie with and if you need it to be bulkier and dense you know denser you can just palmer it more so that's my preference so you can always overdo this as compared to what I'm doing. And I'm looking for scissors. I don't live there. Okay. So the Stanfo Stomp brush device has this neat little tray right here that you probably can't see. And basically it has a, kind of a ruler on it. So I can cut my fibers to the length I need and then they'll just sit right in that little groove. And I can put them up on my brush. So that's pretty slick. So I'm just cutting my core fibers. I'm going to do three sections is what you typically get out of this. <clears throat> and I'm just going to start spreading these out and get a nice even base across this wire. And then I'm going to take the little bit of leftovers and I'm just going to lay them into place wherever I see kind of any pockets or gaps or any loose spots that didn't get filled in all the way. Cool. So then we're going to take big fly fiber, right? This is Hedron's big fly fiber. You don't need a ton of this. You can use a pretty sparse amount. And I'm going to cut that straight off. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the curl off of that. We don't need the curl. We're just going to be using the straight fibers. And I like to put this at about seven inches. So you can measure that off. I got it marked on my dubbing brush device here. And what is easiest is if you kind of flare this and you just take a very light pinch. That got messed up there. You take a very light pinch and just lay it in 
and we're just going to go down and fill up this whole brush and if you do it sparse it'll be more consistent and more even if you try to do too much you'll kind of get uh, really fat sections and it won't look as nice when you go to spin this up Now we're going to add a really uh, kind of light uh, layer of flash to this. I think the flash kind of helps hold everything in place. It kind of helps secure everything. It's obviously nice and flashy, which is sweet for a pipe fly. And so you can use this brush on its own. And what you have is this really flashy core. It's almost like you took an EP uh, craft fur brush and sparkle brush and made them into one brush. That's kind of, uh, I don't know, the kind of result of it. And this is this same brush here that I already made. And so that's kind of the result. But something else you can do, which is pretty cool, is you can make a flash hackle using this. And so you can kind of stage it out. This is actually about a third of this. You can make about three flash hackles per table. Um, and here, I'll show you a bug. This is the fly using this brush that we're in the process of making. And you can see I have a tail of big fly fiber and you can see this big fly fiber wing coming down over top of that and it makes a really nice tapered silhouette when you palmer that. And then I took that flash hackle and I palmered that in front of my dubbing brush. So that's the kind of stuff we're looking at. It makes about an eight and a half inch uh, bait fish pattern that I'll probably show you in a different video. So back to this dubbing brush, we're taking a pretty hefty amount of ice wing fiber all the way down and I'm just printing this straight out of the bag beans so we have we're basically done with our brush here we're going to spin this up but what you should know is that these are rather thick synthetics and this is a really thick wire right this is the largest size wire and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my wire over and I'm going to put dubbing wax on it now the only reason I'd recommend this is because without the dubbing wax the thick materials when your wire starts to twist it'll start to push them down this brush. But if you put dubbing wax in, it'll stop this material from being pushed around and it'll stay right where you intended it. So I'm gonna run that once up, once down the full length of my brush here. Make sure I get it centered. And then catch it around this hook. I'm gonna wrap it twice around the hook and then I'm going to spin my turbo spinner to lock that in place and you can see my brush starting to go here which is okay and after about five turns that wire is basically locked in and you can cut it off so what I like to do is I'm going to put maybe 10 or 15 spins onto that and then drop my tray so that when I let go it starts to get everything basically under tension immediately right and then we're gonna spin this up until we get halfway through that spring which is right about now so you can see that didn't take long right that turbo spinner is on a bearing and you can spin that up pretty darn quick and so I'm just going to take a dog brush. You can use your bobkin if you want. It'll take a little bit longer for you. And I'm just going to come through and pick all this out, all of our trap fires, break everything free. And then we'll have one final spin till the end and pick it out one more time and you're done. And that is a really slick completely synthetic dubbing brush 
with this really dense core that's going to build your bulk. You got a long supple wing material which is the big fly fiber coming out of there and then you have the nice kind of, uh, what is that? Basically iced up, the ice wing fiber but at a fuller length. So I'm just going to come in, cut that free, cut my wire, use some crappy scissors for that. And you got a dubbing brush, right? And this is good for well, I've been using it just about two full pipe flies out of that, and so far this has taken me 10 minutes to make not in fast forward. So, you know, that's not a lot of time, and it's going to save you a ton of time. And it's extremely durable, and it builds your bulk and silhouette really nice. So, before I let you go, what I like to do is you can take your fingers on either side of this brush and pull it. And what I want is I want a flat brush so when I start to palm in this I can collect all my fibers to one side just like you do with EP sparkle brushes and craft fur brushes and foxy brushes and all that good stuff right so we're basically just trying to orient our fibers so that it's a lot easier to work with when the time comes and there you have it it's about a seven inch wide big fly fiber brush for use in pike and musky flies and I got I got one more fly for you where did I put that there it is this is using a musky sized brush so we just built the pike brush right it was two and a half inches uh, for your core and it was seven inches for the big fly fiber this is a nine inch brush that I built a, a critter getter with and basically what I did is I took uh, that core from two and a half out to about three and a quarter inches, right? And that big fly fiber or uh, EP game changer fibers, you can still get three sections out of that, so you don't use any more material necessarily. And then I took big fly fiber at nine inches, and I have this. You can see it. There's no bucktail in here at all. This is 100% synthetic. You can see the core, the the green kind of chartreuse -y fibers are my EP Game Changer blends and then you can see how that's supporting that wing material and creating that silhouette and taper and that's articulated on a 40 millimeter big game shank and an A-Rex 4 op Predator Stinger so that's just one, one of the other options is doing the musky brush which is a three and a quarter and nine inches for that and that's pretty cool right that's one heck of a slick bug so thanks for watching I hopefully will be selling these on my website. I don't know uh, kind of what quantities or package deals I'll have going on, but check that out probably, what's today? August, September. By the end of September, that'll be up and running, I hope. Um, and I'll have some standard color combos and then I'll be accepting customs, whatever you want to do. I'll work with you and we'll make you up some dubbing brushes. So thanks for watching and hopefully this helps you guys out and enjoy time.